Hey there, Shade here, the artist behind Sadie Saves the Day. And today I have something different for you guys. This is an unofficial video to support the Animal Artist Collective. It's a brand new artist collective on YouTube and it was founded by Denise Soden from In Liquid Color and Jennifer Charlie from Jennifer Charlie Art. I'm so excited about this. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun and really support a good cause. 50% of the proceeds from all of the paintings that are painted during the Animal Artist Collective will go towards animal conservation and the videos come out every other month. This month, the theme is tropical rainforest, which you know, I was so excited about. So I had to do this because I really wanted to support them because this is their very first month and everybody in it is really cool you probably know them all there's also eve bolt and anita godzinska so go and definitely check out their videos i will have them linked in the description below and i'll also make a playlist so when we were talking about tropical rainforests my mind went to frogs a lot of the other animals are really popular, particularly mammals and lions and panthers and stuff like that, but not as many people think about amphibians. I guess they're not as cute, I don't know, but I think they're really pretty. And did you know that one third, one third of the frog population is endangered? That's crazy, that doesn't even make sense. And 160 frog species have gone extinct in the last 20 years. There are a ton of different reasons, including the pet industry, climate change, the destruction of their habitats and pollution. But that is a lot of frogs endangered or completely extinct. And I think that that's really sad because they are an important part of our ecosystem. So I decided to paint these frogs on black paper with gouache because I saw the glass frog and it looked like it was like coming out of the darkness. And I liked this idea of these frogs kind of coming out of the darkness, I guess the darkness of being endangered and going instinct and coming into the light. So I kind of wanted it to feel a little ethereal and a little somber. So the first froggy that I've been painting here is the Panamanian golden frog. It's native to, you guessed it, Panama. And it's critically endangered. Actually, they think that it might be extinct in the wild since 2007, but they have been growing it in captivity. Actually, this frog is also not even a frog. It is a toad, but the name fits, so I kept it in this collection of paintings. As you can probably guess by the extremely bright coloration, it is toxic. Actually, its toxins could kill you in about 20 to 30 minutes. So if you ever see this in the wild, don't rub off on it or lick it or something like that. The main reason why this frog is endangered is because of a fungus, which is sweeping across all different species of frogs and killing them. And also a loss of its habitat, which is being lost to housing and farming and many different things like that. Fortunately, there are some captive breeding programs, but they can't release them back into the wild until they figure out how to solve this fungus problem. Nobody really knows what caused this fungus to become so virulent, but some people think that it's because of climate change that made it a bit stronger. And some people also think that this was a naturally occurring fungus, but it just became extremely dangerous somehow while frogs were being held captive in the pet industry. Painting this frog was really fun. I really enjoyed trying to get these super, super bright yellows. I tried to have the hands and the back of the frog kind of fading off into the darkness.
So you can see I'm kind of wiping away some of the paint to try to have it a bit more faded. I'd never painted a fog in gouache before, so I wasn't really sure how it was going to turn out. But I think that they turned out okay. The thing that was really difficult during this painting was trying to get the saturation up, because on the black paper, everything wants to kind of desaturate. It doesn't want to stay really bright and vibrant, and so that makes it a little difficult. So this next frog that I'm painting is the Golden Mantella. This is a frog that is native to Madagascar. Actually, I think you can only find it in three different parts of Madagascar in super tiny areas. It is critically endangered. It is a super tiny frog. In this painting, it doesn't look that small, but this frog is actually around 20 to 26 millimeters, so an inch or less. It's kind of crazy how tiny it is. And just like the Panamanian golden frog, it is toxic. That's why it is so crazy bright. This frog gets its toxicity from the food that it eats. The main things that seem to be threatening the golden mantilla are the destruction of its habitat and the pet industry because it is seen to be a desirable pet. It's easy to take care of, and of course, it's very striking. And I guess because it's tiny, it's cute. So many exotic animal collectors like to take this frog and keep it in their home. Luckily, there is also a program trying to breed these frogs in captivity until they can be released into the wild. When I was painting this, I was thinking this is going to be the most difficult frog. The reason why is because it's a very re bright red salmony color, and that was really difficult for me to get the amount of saturation that I wanted on this paper. And also, it's kind of weird because most red objects, when you're painting them, a really easy mistake to make is to oversaturate the shadows because if you just keep on piling red, it's going to end up with super hyper-saturated shadows. But the thing is with this frog, that's exactly what's going on. All of the shadows somehow are even more saturated than the rest of the frog. But I just couldn't get the amount of saturated that I wanted. I think that it ended up pretty okay, but these frogs look crazy bright. This one I had on a little leaf, or at least a kind of suggestion of a leaf. Unlike with the Panamanian golden frog, I'm going to add some texture to the skin on this one, and that was a lot of fun. Just kind of like stippling around with a very light and thick gouache to make these little spots on the skin to show the extreme highlights that it has. There are two different types of this frog. There's the red version and the golden version, but I decided to paint this red one because I thought it was really striking.
you would think that painting something in one color would make it a lot easier and often color studies are really great at just figuring out values but i feel like the combination of reds and oranges in this frog was really difficult because i didn't want it to go too yellow and i wanted it to go too orange kind of one of this salmony red color so there was not very much margin for error I think the colors that I ended up using were a type of golden red and quinacridone magenta. And then I think there's a bit of phthalo green to tone it down in the shadows. Now it's time for the highlights. <laughs> really, all I'm doing is just making little dots and kind of smushing them around with my finger, which works surprisingly well. So I just do that in the places where I see these highlights on the frog. It's really wet and shiny. And I feel like this really helped it come together. That's the thing about frogs, their skin is really moist and it's actually very sensitive. The skin on frogs actually basically helps them breathe because they do not have very strong lungs. So they kind of help filter everything around them. Unfortunately for them, our water is getting poorer and poorer and filled with more and more toxic chemicals. So they get affected more than many other animals. Of course, I'm not really using just straight white here. This is mixed with the yellow that I was already using on the palette and I think a little bit of the red. I'm just putting in a little more of that leafy thing because I feel like it just dried up into nothing and looked like dust on the paper. This is just regular black sketchbook paper, nothing fancy. So two down, one to go. So the last frog that I'm painting is the glass frog. So the glass frog is not really a species, it's a class of animal. There are around 60 different types of glass frog and a lot of them are endangered or critically endangered. They're called the glass frog because, well, they kind of look like glass. On the top, you can't see as well. But if you look down at their stomachs, they're basically transparent and you can actually see their organs and their heart and everything. And some of them also have green bones. 
The theory is that this is a type of camouflage and actually even if you shine a light directly on them, they're kind of hard to see. This is supposed to make them blend in with the leaves around them. And I think also they're supposed to emit the same kind of wavelength as leaves. So that's kind of weird and kind of cool. So like I said, many of the glass frog species are endangered. That includes the Puyo giant glass frog, which is from Ecuador. It is endangered. And also the Buckley's giant glass frog, which last time they looked for it, they took three years and they only found three examples of this frog. At this point, they think that it no longer exists. Both of these frogs are from Ecuador, which actually has one of the largest amounts of amphibians in the world. And unfortunately, they are endangered because over half of their habitat has been destroyed in recent years. They are tree-dwelling frogs, and this is the environment that they need to survive. They spend most of their lives in the tree and rarely come down. So if they don't have trees to live in, they will die. So right now you see I'm putting in some warm color by the stomach. That's because, like I said before, that's where the frog is transparent. So you can see some of its organs in there kind of coming through. And you can also see that in some of the bit of the leg and stuff like that. So I've been telling you all of this sad stuff. What can you do about it? Well, kind of obvious stuff. Take care of the environment. Try to recycle, try not to waste, don't just throw stuff out on the ground, put stuff in, actually in a trash can, try not to create as much waste as you can. These are pretty basic stuff. The biggest thing that you can do on your own is try to take care of the environment because that's the biggest thing that affects frogs. Like I said before, their skin is extremely sensitive. so. They are very sensitive to wastewater and what's inside of it. And as our water quality is decreasing, they are some of the first animals to be affected by it. If their skin barrier is damaged, they will die. So they need to be in an environment where the water is clean enough for them to survive. On that note, be careful with your wake's water. Don't throw away medications into the sink or into the toilet. Don't put other toxic chemicals or other things that should really be disposed of properly. A really big problem is that so much water is being filled with different kinds of medication and requires large amounts of treatments to make it safe for both ourselves and for the environment. Another thing that we as artists have to think about is the chemicals in our paints and other products that we're using and to be careful with the disposal of those because that's going to affect this little guy. So whatever paints that you're using, use it responsibly. And another thing that you can do is to donate to the Rainforest Alliance. They are dedicated to the conservation of rainforest animals, including amphibians. And that is the charity that I have chosen to support with the proceeds from my painting. So remember I said that I thought that the golden mantella was the most difficult part of this painting? <laughs> I was wrong. This was the most difficult part. It was so hard to try to figure out how to get this frog to look kind of transparent, but kind of solid. It's really difficult, and especially in gouache. I think I kind of got it. What do you guys think?
what I do know is that I liked this part because it was just fun adding all of these little dots that kind of looked like they were glowing. So this painting is going to be available in my shop. I have the link below. I hope that you thought this was fun and interesting. Please like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you think about frogs, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!